Global leaders are gathering in Paris to save the world from the biggest threat humanity has ever faced, man-made climate change. Despite the fact that man-made climate change is a crock of shit and human activity has virtually no impact on heating the planet. The UN is trying to get countries to agree to regulations that would limit temperature increases to 2 degrees Celsius. Despite the fact that corrupt, agenda-driven scientists have been caught over and over again faking temperature data to fool everyone into thinking that global warming is real. The actual figures show there's been no global warming since the late 90s. That means that every single one of these global conferences has been a completely pointless waste of time and money. Their only achievement in terms of altering CO2 emissions has been to belch out millions of tons of CO2 emissions. Global warming alarmists have been proven spectacularly wrong time and time again. In 2007 and 2009, scientists said that the Arctic would have ice-free summers by 2013. By the summer of 2015, Arctic sea ice was the thickest it's been in almost 10 years. Antarctic sea ice also hit a record maximum in 2014. NASA now admits that the polar ice caps are not melting. In 2005, the United Nations predicted there would be 50 million climate refugees by 2010. When this woefully inaccurate prediction failed to pass, the UN tried to delete evidence that they'd made it in the first place. In 2003, the Pentagon released a report predicting that by 2013, climate change would flood California with inland seas and that parts of the Netherlands would be unlivable. In 2000, climate change alarmists said that it would cease to snow in Britain. In 2009, London had its heaviest snowfall in decades. And in 2010, the UK had its coldest winter since records began. You see, they've been proven wrong time and time again because they're lying to you. So why should we believe them now? As the leaked Copenhagen text revealed, the actual agenda behind these conferences is to stop developing countries from becoming prosperous and challenging the unipolar world order. Increasing CO2 emissions, a byproduct of capitalism, are directly linked to prosperity and higher quality of life. Capitalism has lifted hundreds of millions of people out of poverty in China and India since the 80s. Controlling CO2 emissions is a form of neo-imperialism. This is about power. It has nothing whatsoever to do with saving Mother Earth. And in protesting against man-made climate change, socialists and environmentalists are actually ensuring that poor people in the third world remain mired in poverty. But it's like really trendy to wave banners at climate change demos and virtue signal about how environmentally conscious you are. Meanwhile, these retards are actually promoting the impoverishment and in some cases the actual slaughter of people of colour via UN programmes that hire armed militants to drive farmers off their own land so they can seize it to grow biofuels. Programmes to stop global climate change are also a complete waste of money and only serve to massively cripple economies. Solar power and wind are virtually useless. It takes three decades after installing solar panels just to get your money back. And wind turbines are even worse. They're ridiculously expensive and in many cases emit more CO2 than they save. America has enough oil to last for centuries and could even become a bigger producer than Saudi Arabia or Russia. Yes, we need to find alternative forms of energy but ones that actually work. As Bill Gates said, renewable energy can't do the job. It's a total waste of money. Green subsidies should all be switched into research and development of technological breakthroughs, not wasted on pointless solar and wind power that is completely inadequate for the world's needs. Also note how these climate change alarmists move the goalposts every single time they're discredited. 
First they called it global warming, and then when global warming stopped, they called it climate change. Now it's extreme weather conditions, despite the fact that extreme weather conditions are becoming less extreme. And now as a result of decreased solar activity, you know, that giant flaming ball of fire that global warming alarmists say has nothing whatsoever to do with climate change, we're actually about to enter into a new mini ice age, which is a shame because natural global warming actually produces a greener, more fruitful planet and increases the range and diversity of species. The good news is that polls show more and more people have stopped buying into this BS. And look, there are real environmental issues that we need to pay attention to. But man-made global warming isn't one of them. It's been demonstrably proven time and time again to be total horse shit. And the people pushing it have been caught red-handed, lying and faking data to prop up the crony and lucrative industry of the man-made climate change hoax. I'm here to educate you about the single biggest threat to our planet. You see, there is something out there which threatens our very existence and may be the end to the human race as we know it. I'm talking, of course, about man -bear. The Paris Climate Summit is merely another PR exercise to try and revive the discredited fairy tale of man-made climate change.